first, let us define what is a uh, bank regulation. It is a form of government regulation which subjects banks to certain requirements, restrictions, and guidelines designed to create market transparency between banking institutions and the individuals and corporations with whom they conduct business among other things. So in short, um, this is a policy or a system which gives um, requirements or restrictions for the banks to comply with in order to be transparent with its transactions with individuals or firms it is doing business with. So what are the objectives of banking regulations? Why governments impose such uh, requirements or um, restrictions? So these five are the basic objectives of banking regulations. First, being prudential. Second, systemic risk reduction. Third, is to avoid the misuse of banks. Fourth, to protect banking confidentiality. And fifth is credit allocation. So when we say prudential, this aims to reduce the level of risk bank creditors are exposed to. So uh, for instance, the depositors. So they are considered as uh, bank creditors and um, in order for them to be more secured with their uh, credit transactions, so this is uh, what we mean by prudential. According to Madaloni and Scopiletti, May 23, 2019, a prudential framework encompasses both the regulatory setting and the supervisory enforcement, which require financial firms to control their risk taking and to hold adequate capital with the purpose of ensuring the resilience of individual institutions and the stability of the financial system. So being prudential as a, an objective of a banking regulation is to make uh, the institution, especially the banks, be resilient and to be stable on its uh, financial system. So by being resilient and by being stable, uh, it gives more protection, more security to its creditors. For instance, uh, its uh, depositors. Now we speak of the systemic risk reduction. This is to reduce the risk of reduction or disruption rather resulting from adverse trading conditions for banks, causing multiple or major bank failures. So um, when there are adverse trading conditions that happens between banks, other financial institutions, maybe there are economic uh, conditions triggering it, or political scenario or other um, factors that uh, may cause to disrupt the running, the smooth running of the banking businesses. So this is the one of the purposes of um, banking regulation so that um, the risk 
of uh, being disrupted from a smooth flow uh, for multiple or major bank failures will be reduced or lessened. Another purpose is to avoid the misuse of banks, to reduce the risk of banks being used for criminal purposes. For example, laundering the proceeds of crime. So this is one of the most common uh, crimes that is being used for the banks. It is used for money laundering purposes. So to avoid the banks being misused by certain individuals, certain individuals or uh, certain firms, for example, hackers or the like. So this is one of the uh, major uh, objectives of banking regulations. Another uh, goal or objective is to protect banking confidentiality. So as we all know that um, banking transactions are highly confidential. In the Philippines, you have to sign a waiver in order for the bank uh, to release your information. So that's a uh, bank secrecy law. So only a court order can compel the bank to release such confidential information. But having no uh, court order, uh, the bankers, those working with the banks, cannot just release any information relevant to any single depositor. Only a waiver from the depositor can uh, impose or can tell uh, bankers to expose or release their information. And credit allocation, finally, this is to direct credit to favored sectors. So this is to give chance to all the people um, to be granted, to be allocated with credits or loans, not only to specific uh, people, for instance, or for example, to the relatives of those working in the banks or uh, people um, related with uh, the, the owners of the banks or the likes, the people who are influential. So a banking regulation must ensure that all people, well, of course, all qualified or capable people can have access or can be granted with uh, credit loans. So now we're going to let us uh, try to um, reflect or uh, learn uh, the banking regulations that um, exist here in the uh, Philippines. We'll try to localize it for us to be able to be more familiar or more aware with this. So I, I have taken this from an internet website. So uh, let me just take the credits from uh, here from lexology.com of 2019. So most of our discussions will come from their uh, website and let's get credit uh, to this uh, to the information um, that is uh, released here and we'll use it for educational purposes. So, because this is a good uh, basis or reference for our study. So this is in the form of question and answer. So let's 
try to analyze one by one. All right. What are the principal governmental and regulatory policies that govern banking sector? So basically, there are two, the general banking law and the manual of regulations of the banks, or simply the implement, implementing policy with this. So uh, let us um, read first. Uh, the General Banking Law or our Republic Act 8791 uh, providing for the regulation of the organization of operations of banks, quasi-banks, trust entities, and for other offices. So specifically, we're going to read section 721. Let me read it for you. The organization, the ownership, and capital requirements, powers, supervision, and general conduct of business of free banks, rural banks, and cooperative banks should be governed by the provisions of the Free Banks Act, the Rural Banks Act, and the Cooperative Code, respectively. The organization, ownership, and capital requirements, powers, supervision and general conduct of business of Islamic banks shall be governed by special laws. The provisions of this act, however, insofar as they are in conflict with the provisions of the Three Banks Act, the Rural Banks Act, and the Cooperative Code shall likewise apply to Three Banks, Rural Banks, and Cooperative Banks respectively. However, for purposes of prescribing the minimum ratio which the net worth of a thrift bank is bear to its total risk assets, the provisions of Section 33 of this Act shall govern. So let us uh, try to simplify what this uh, section of Article as of RA 8791 states. So the general banking law applies, however, to thrift banks and rural banks insofar as it is not in conflict with the provisions of the special laws governing such banks. On the other hand, the Philippine Cooperative Code recognizes the primacy of general banking law in the regulation of cooperative banks. So these kind of banks, um, free banks, rural banks, and cooperative banks have um, special laws that is created for this but if there is no conflict with the general banking law it may be applied to this type of banks the rules implementing the above statutes are embodied in the manual of regulations for banks or MORP issued by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, the Philippine Central Bank. From time to time, additional circulars and other suances are promulgated by the BSP to cover new matters, if not to amend, repeal, supplement, or otherwise modify existing rules. So, question, which regulatory authorities are primarily responsible for overseeing banks? The Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or simply BSP, through its monetary board, is primarily responsible for overseeing banks. The PDIC, or Philippine Deposit 
Insurance Corporation can also conduct examination of tax with the prior approval of the Monetary Board, provided that no examination can be conducted by the PTIC within 12 months of the previous examination date. So it, is sta it states that the uh, regulatory authority primarily responsible to oversee banks is the Banco Central of Filipinas. through its uh, monetary board. So it also, it is also mentioned here that the PDIC or Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation can also conduct examination, but it should be one in or annual, one in a year, once a year or in annual. It cannot be conducted by the PDIC within 12 months of the previous examination so it can all it can do this a month uh, i'm sorry a year after that is annually so banks must ensure their deposit liabilities with pdic each depositor is a beneficiary of the insurance for a maximum amount of five hundred thousand philippine pesos or its current currency equivalent. So class, this is a very uh, uh, basic knowledge for us studying uh, finance or banking uh, laws or banking institutions that each depositor is a beneficiary of an insurance with a maximum amount of 500,000 pesos or its uh, equivalent in foreign currency. So the grant of loans and other credit accommodations by a bank to its directors, officers, stockholders, and their related interests and to subsidiaries and affiliates is regulated. So this is what I have mentioned earlier. Those uh, related to director, officer, stockholder, or subsidiaries or affiliates of a bank must be regulated or are restricted with certain uh, regulations. The MORB provides different ceilings for loans to those three. When we say those three, uh, directors, officers, stockholders, and their related interests, and to subsidiaries and affiliates. So there are different ceilings. When we say ceilings, these are the maximum amounts that can be loaned or loanable. Total outstanding loans to each of the bank's dossier is limited to an amount equivalent to their respective on encumbered deposits and book value of their paid in capital contribution in the bank. On the other hand, total outstanding loans to each of the bank's subsidiaries and affiliates must not exceed 10% of the net worth of the lending bank. For these purposes, an affiliate is an entity linked directly or indirectly to a bank by means of. So when an entity qualifies under these considerations, either directly or indirectly, these uh, organizations, companies, firms, or entities are considered affiliates of that particular bank. So what are those? And the ownership, control, or power to vote of at least 20% of the outstanding voting stock. When there is interlocking directorship, 
or officership. Common stockholders owning at least 10% of the outstanding voting stock of the bank and at least 20% of the outstanding voting stock of the borrowing entity. Management contract or any arrangement granting power to the bank to direct or cause the direction of management and policies of the borrowing entity or permanent proxy or voting trusts in favor of the bank constituting at least 20% of the outstanding voting stock of the borrowing entity or vice versa. So let's continue. The BSP recently excluded portions of loans and other credit accommodations covered by guarantees of international and regional institutions or multilateral financial institutions where the Philippine government is a member or shareholder from the ceilings on loans granted by banks to their subsidiaries and affiliates. Related party transactions. So now we're discussing our related party transactions. What are those transactions that are considered uh, done uh, between related parties? So these are generally allowed, provided that these are done on an arm's length basis, meaning it is fair, it is just, it is within the means. Banks, including their non-bank financial subsidiaries and affiliates are expected to exercise appropriate oversight and implement effective control systems for managing exposures arising from related party transactions. So core banking consists of deposit taking and lending. So these are the basic uh, tasks of banking to take deposits and to lend uh, money or any other funds all of which is subject to pertinent rules promulgated by the Monetary Court. 
in particular, commercial banking includes uh, the following. To accept drafts, to issue letters of credit, to discount and negotiate promissory notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and other evidence of debt, accepting or creating demand deposits, receiving other types of deposits, as well as deposit substitutes, buying and selling foreign exchange, as well as gold or silver bullion, acquiring marketable bonds and other debt securities, and extending credit. So these are more specific transactions that do happen in commercial banks because uh, we uh, normal or uh, regular customers only know the basic uh, banking transactions like taking deposits and lending. But all of these happen uh, in reality. So what are the primary regulatory challenges facing the banking industry? So using financial technology, the requirements, KYC or know your customer requirements, ensuring cybersecurity and data privacy act, which mandates certain registration and compliance requirements. So uh, basically this, um, these challenges are um, that are being encountered by the banks are tasky, but these are done just like what we have said on our uh, definition of banking regulation. This is done in order to restrict, regulate, and for the benefits of the customers or the clients or depositors of the bank. So even though it entails more security, more task, uh, high-tech applications or gadgets, but it's all worth, worth it because in the end, everybody will benefit from this strict um, regulations and even laws by uh, the government. So banks are subject to Banco Central ng Pilipinas Financial Consumer Protection Framework, which sets out the minimum standards of consumer protection in different areas. It includes disclosure and transparency, protection of client information, fair treatment, effective recourse, and financial education. So these are the areas. We call them framework for which uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas uh, has set in order to protect uh, banking cost, co customers, consumers, or clients. Legal and regulatory policy changes over the next few years will likely be driven by the following goals. So these are the vision, the goals, or the objectives probably of the banking industry or banking regulations here in the Philippines. Aligning the country's financial regulations and policies with international standards. Wow. So we're looking forward to be uh, with aligned with uh, international standards so we can improve risk management and ensure competitiveness in view of ASEAN integration. So this is more of benchmarking with our neighbor countries in terms of financial regulations and policies. Next is to strengthen anti-money anti -money laundering capability and risk management systems to address weaknesses exposed by financial controversies. Promotion of financial 
exclusion and access to financial services by the poor and addressing risk arising out of new technology while at the same time encouraging innovation. How are banks supervised by their regulatory authorities? How often do these examinations occur and how extensive are they? The BSP examines the books of every bank once every 12 months or simply once a year or annually and at such other times as the monetary board may deem expedient. An interval of at least 12 months is required between annual examinations. The BSP examiners are authorized to administer oath to any director, officer, or employee of any bank and to compel the presentation of all books, documents, papers, or records necessary to ascertain the facts relative to the true condition of such bank. The PDIC may also examine banks with the prior approval of the monetary board to determine whether they are engaging in unsafe and unsound banking practices. No examination can be conducted by the PDIC within 12 months of the last examination date. To avoid overlapping of efforts, the PDIC examination considers the relevant reports and findings of the BSP pertaining to the bank under examination. Violations of any of the provisions of the general banking law are subject to the penalties and other sanctions under the new Central Bank Act. When any owner, director, officer, or agent of the bank who being required in writing by the monetary board of the bank or by the head of the supervising and examining department of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas willfully refuses to file the required report or refuses to permit a lawful examination into the affairs of such a bank, he or she will be punished by a fine of between 50 and 20, 100,000 Philippine pesos or by imprisonment of not less than one year or no more than five years or both at the discretion of the court. On the other hand, it was already mentioned. On the other hand, the willful making of a false or misleading statement on a material fact to the monetary board or to the VSP examiners will be punished by a fine or between 100,000 and 200,000 Philippine pesos or by imprisonment of not more than five years or both at the court's discretion. In turn, any person who is responsible for willful violation of the general banking law or, on, or any order, instruction, rule, or regulation issued by the monetary board will at the court's discretion be punished by a fine of between 500,000 and 200,000 Philippine pesos or by imprisonment of not less than two years or no more than 10 years or both. Whenever a bank persists in carrying on its business in unlawful or unsafe money manner, the monetary board may take action for the receivership and liquidation of such bank 
without prejudice to the penalties provided in the first sentence of this paragraph and the administrative sanctions provided in the next paragraph. Without prejudice to the foregoing criminal sanctions against culpable persons, the Monetary Board may impose administrative sanctions for any of the above violations, willful violation of the charter or bylaws of the bank, any commission of irregularities, or conducting business in an unsafe or unsound manner as determined by the Monetary Board. These administrative sanctions are as follows. So now we're speaking of the administrative sanctions. Fines in amounts as may be determined by the monetary board to be appropriate, but in no case to exceed 30,000 Filipino pesos a day for each violation, taking into consideration the attendant circumstances such as the nature and gravity of the violation or irregularity and the size of the bank. Suspension or of rediscounting privileges or access to the VSP credit facilities. Suspension of lending or foreign exchange operations or authority to accept new deposits or make new investments. Suspension of interbank clearing privileges and revocation of the quasi banking license. In addition, the monetary board can suspend or remove the offending director or officer of the bank. In this respect, the termination or even the resignation from office of such director or officer will not exempt him from administrative or criminal sanctions. Moreover, the erring corporation may be dissolved by co warrant proceeding instituted by the Solicitor General. In this connection, an original co warrant proceeding may be commenced with the Supreme Court of the Philippines. What are the most common enforcement issues and how they have been addressed by the regulations in the banks? Cybersecurity concerns continue to confront financial institutions both locally and worldwide. Guys, uh, students, class. So these are very um, timely. There are a lot of scammers everywhere here in the Philippines and even outside. Top cyber threats include card scheming. You know, the card scheming using the ATM, using the machine, they will copy the uh, relevant important information so that they can use it to withdraw funds. That's a scheming, uh, basically or technically, te technically it's copying, phishing attacks. We. Uh, we go into uh, different websites. It attracts us to give us uh, important con confidential details or information about us, especially to regards to our banking uh, banking details, ransomware and other malware, viruses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Accordingly, the BSP has directed banks to adopt advanced cybersecurity controls and countermeasures and to improve the management of information security risks and exposures. So lesson, personal lesson for all of us, be aware, be vigilant with uh, our surroundings. Do not just trust anybody, especially uh, saying or telling us that they uh, our bank's representative and they are asking for our details. No, 
the banks will never ask us of our uh, important details uh, randomly. So there are specific certain circumstances on which they can just ask us. This is for verification. So I encounter it when I encountered it when I lost my ATM card. So they will verify some relevant information regarding me. But for no reason, they will just call you and ask you important details. Of course, you have to think many, many uh, times before answering them. Meanwhile, the money laundering incident in 2016, if you can still remember it, no, there is uh, this incident that happened where the proceeds from the hacking of the Bangladesh Bank were permitted to enter the Philippine financial system. It prompted, prompted the Banco Central of Filipinas, ng Filipinas to update anti-money laundering guidelines. The new regulation emphasizes the use of a risk-based approach to the Know Your Customer or KYC processes. If you have been into banks after 2016, it becomes more strict, stricter and stricter because of what happened during the during this year where money funds from Bangladesh Bank were allowed uh, to enter into our Philippine banking system. So there were commentaries during the time that uh, this incident, some said, only showed how vulnerable is the Philippine financial system to uh, different uh, fraudulent acts or cybersecurity concerns. This is the reason why the Banco Central ng Pilipinas uh, becomes uh, more strict with its implementation. In what circumstances may banks be taken over by the government or regulatory authorities? How frequent is this in practice? How are the interests of the various stakeholders treated? So the monetary board may appoint a conservator for a bank that is in a state of continuing inability or unwillingness to maintain a condition of liquidity deemed adequate to protect the interests of depositors and creditors. The conservator will have such powers as the monetary board deems necessary to take charge of the assets and liabilities of the bank, to manage it or reorganize its management, to collect all monies and debts due, and restore its viability. So what is the role of the bank's management and directors in the case of a bank failure? Must banks have a resolution plan or similar documents? The directors and officers of a failing bank must cooperate with the regulators, including the conservator and receiver. The following acts of director or an officer of such bank are subject to criminal penalties. What are those? Refusal to turn over bank records and assets to the designated receiver. Tampering bank records appropriating bank assets for himself or herself or another part, causing the misappropriation and destruction of bank assets, receiving or permitting or causing to be received in any bank, in the bank any deposit, collections of loans or receivables, paying out or permitting or causing to be paid out any fund of the bank and transferring or causing to be transferred securities or property of the bank. The bank's directors and officers who knowingly assent to patently unlawful acts of the bank or who are guilty of gross negligence or bad faith in directing the affairs of the bank or acquire any personal or pecuniary interest in conflict with their duties as such directors or officers will be liable jointly and severally for all resulting damages suffered by the bank and its shareholders. So how are they going to be charged for the damages? 
So their liability is jointly and severally. So these are all from Lexology.com uh, 2019. And we will.